All right, we're back to this fella. I've lost track. I think this is video number 11. Not sure. But anyway, we'll have the number on there. I took some time off camera to just kind of clean up. I had some cuts in here I didn't really like. I wanted to clean that up. I had some cuts up around the head I wanted to clean up. But when we, when we focus in on him, he's looking okay. Now, a lot of times I'll take a carving, and when I'm done carving it, I'm done taking off the saw marks. I'm done putting in the, you know, the 99% of the details that I put in. I'll take it out in the shop and I'll run it through my Dremel. And my Dremel, what I'll do is I have some uh, scotch Brite pads on there, little pieces of them. And I'll go over and whiz it a little bit to make sure it's nice and uh, taken care of it in terms of all the, the fuzzies. And sometimes you can do that with your with your tools and sometimes it's a lot easier and a lot faster and a lot cleaner to just uh, go whiz or wheel it as I call it. Anyway, it's a Dremel with a with a rotary bit in it, not a rotary bit, I apologize, with a mandrel in it and a couple of squares of rough Scotch-Brite pad on it. I use the red part and it cleans it up really well. It gets it ready for paint. All right, so we've got a couple things we want to finish up on this because we're just about finished with him, believe it or not. What we want to do is give him shape around his body and we want to give him shape around or the, the shape of the eyes. And so I'm going to draw a line right in here between his bow tie and his feet. And that's going to constitute the white part. This is going to be white in here and the outside is going to be black. And so I'll take a V tool and I'll get in and do that. I'm also going to do his eyes, so I'm going to draw a center line right here on the on the penguin, and then I'm just going to give him some big round cartoon eyes. I did him so cartoony the other day. One of my friends, when I showed it to him, a picture of it, he says, "Is that them glue-on beady eyes?" And I no, no, those are really carved in. So we're going to do that. Just like that. And I'll, let, I'll get this a little bit closer to the camera. Not sure if there's enough light to see that. But you can see that those are carved eyes. Not painted on. Not beaded. But those are carved eyes. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to see if we have enough time to tool around the, the hat. Let me, let me get my clock started again. I keep forgetting to start that thing. Alright. So, got my thumb protector back on. Make sure I'm safe. I want to draw the things that I just drew. I'll put them on in dark so you can see it. We're going to have a big eye over here, and I'm going to make them match a little bit more. It didn't really match when I drew it. See how closely those match. We've got a bow tie here. There's the knot. There's a couple of wrinkles. And then we're going to tool that hat. I'll show you how we do tool that hat. It's a very neat little thing if you've never done it. It really comes in handy in terms of getting that hat to have that texture that this one does. All right, I'm going to get me a little V-tool. And if I can get in there, I just want to make that line that I drew in. It's going to separate the white part of the body from the black part of the body. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's hidden up under that bow tie. But anyway, it's that line right there. In fact, I'll draw it in. Let me draw in that groove so that you can see it. Okay, we'll do the same thing on the other side. And that'll be easy enough to paint white around the sides or white in the front. But we've got to cut on both sides of that. I gotta cut on both sides and I've got to cut on the bottom. Next, we're going to cut this in. We're going to do that bow, that bow tie. I'm just going to go straight in and carve up to make, separate that knot. And ordinarily, we would then cut in those wrinkles. But what I'm going to do is shape this. I want this coming at an angle. So I'm going to take my fishtail gouge and I just want to cut that in at a slight angle. I don't have to have it a real deep angle. All I'm going to do is make sure that that bow tie has a little bit of a shape to it under his under his under his chin. Do penguins have chins? 
Well, this guy does. And we'll go across, cut that in, come back with our knife and score it. Score it so we can take off that little bit of fuzzy hanging off there. We'll do the same thing on this side, then we'll clean up under the beak because we kind of did a number to that. We'll come back with our V-tool and just freehand put in a couple of wrinkles on that bow tie like that. And just to make sure that it's not perfectly symmetrical, we'll put a big one, a little one, and a big one over here. So we've got two on one side and three on the other. It makes it look, gives it a little more interesting character. Clean up back up under there. And then we're gonna shape that knot a little bit more. What we're gonna do also is cut down around the knot and indent that each side of it behind the knot. Take a little bit there and a little bit out right there. And we've got this guy where we want him to go. I'm going to reach down here in my bag and grab another tool. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to use a small U-gouge. Hope you can see that. And all we're going to do is poke in here and make texture just like we did here. So we go in starting and try to do it randomly so that they don't all look like they were done with a machine. They don't all look like they were done in the same way, in the same all one right after they're like little soldiers. Just make it random. So all we're gonna do is down around the bottom, we'll go one way, in the middle we'll go another way. Sometimes they'll overlap and I'll turn. And over the course of the time, we'll just continue tooling that in. You can do it with any number of sides of V-tool, of U-gouges, because I can make smaller ones if I switch to, if you notice, I switch to a smaller tool. It doesn't look a whole lot different from one to the other. This smaller tool has a tendency to dig in deeper. But we can make some of them big, some of them little, and it just gives that randomness to a Christmas hat that a Santa might wear. Or you might wear. I know we always do Christmas at my house with the kids and every one of us have our own Santa hat we wear. When we're opening up presents. It just gets you into that festive mood. Sometimes I see somebody all around town and they're wearing those Santa hats and I'm just going, yep, that's somebody that's got into the Christmas spirit. But we're going to do that all the way around this guy. All the way around this hat. And all we're doing is just giving it some kind of texture. Now you notice sometimes we, we, we dip into the hat on both sides. Just know that you've got to have some cleanup at, at the end of it because it gets a little random and sometimes the chips go a little bit further and the cuts go a little bit way you don't want. It's all right, as long as you've left wood there, you can go back and clean that up and take some of that out. I know some people that also use this with a V-tool. I've seen a couple of carvings online where Santa's robe was completely V-tooled uh, on the fur part of the robe. And I, I like that, but I'm, a, I'm hesitant to try it because I think it can be done really wrong if you don't know what you're doing. I might have to try that on one that I don't mind throwing away as a practice piece just to see if it works. But I've always done this with the Santas, especially with the Santa hat, because I like the way it looks. Comes in handy. For tooling and giving it some texture. Now if you'll notice again, we had some cleanup back here. We'll go back here and just clean up those little chips where we made some stray marks. Because I don't like stray marks. And we'll just clean up all those wicked little chips that we left laying everywhere and all those stray cuts that we made. All right, we'll do the same thing with the hat. Now the hat's a little bit differently because the grain runs up and down. Because the grain runs up and down, if I try to cut it from the bottom up, I'm going to gouge out a piece. If I try to go from the side out, I'm going to gouge out a piece. So I'm going to start at the top, and I'm just going to take 
two or three random gouge cuts in here to do the middle to get that shaped. A lot of times what you can do is go from the outside in. You're going sideways and so it's going to have a tendency to split out on you, but you can do it that way as well. I'll do it on this side as well. I'm just going to go from the outside in carefully. Make sure it doesn't split out on me. And then from the bottom, I go down. So at the top, I was going up. The bottom, I'm going down. And if you notice, that hat is now tooled about as well as we can make it. Okay. Other than some cleanup, we're, we're just about done with this fella. And we're going to do his eyes. I do these eyes in a V-tool. Normally, if I'm doing human eyes, I would draw them out and use a very sharp, tip, thin, flexible knife. But on this one, because I don't want them to look bulgy and I don't want them to look goofy, I'm just going to outline them with a V-tool. All I'm going to do is follow my lines and try to take off that line as I go around. You have to be real careful because the grain changes on you and it has a tendency, depending on how much pressure you're putting on it, to jump on you. But there's one eye. And we'll do the other one. And for me, it doesn't matter, since I've done plenty of these, which way I go up and then down or down then up. But we got that guy there. All right. And so other than just some minor cleanup, we're done with this fella. We've got him done, shaped, put together, carved in, and pretty much where we want to go. So I'm going to spend some time cleaning up. And then on the next video, what we're going to do so take you out in the garage where I do my work around the any type of woodwork or anything, band saws and whatever. And I'll show you how we kind of clean things up. It'll be noisy and messy, but again, we'll talk about safety while we're out there. And uh, we'll get this fellow looking a little bit better. And then we'll spend a few videos painting him. And we'll be done with this project, ready to move on to the next one. Again, if you have a particular video you want to see, a particular carving you want me to do. It may be one that I've already done and don't do anymore. It may be one that I've never done and we can both learn along the way. But anyway, give me a, give me a comment in the, in, in the bottom or send me an email or whatever you want to do and let me know and hook me up on Facebook and talk to me there. But um, I'll do a lot of classes over the years and have a little bit of fun with you and We'll get to know each other and share a few laughs. Don't have a joke this time, but I'll try to remember a joke next time I come together. But I think we're just about done with this fella. He needs some wizard wheeling so we can clean him up. And then he needs some sealing and painting, and we'll have a little bit of fun with him. But I think this video series is just about done. We'll, we'll clean him up in the next video, and then we'll move on. And we'll talk to you then.